Hello everyone, We're welcome back to another one of our videos. Today I'm going to uh, interview a very good friend of mine, Brian. A uh, young guy, you're not, uh, you're not an old timer, you don't have a big pension. No, You're no. just getting by out here the best way you can. Yep. Working jobs. Yep, you got it. And the one thing we're really going to want to focus in on today is uh, he's towing a car. And so the question comes up, should you tow a car? And we're going to talk to Brian because he's been doing it. So Brian, uh, why are you towing a car? What was your motivation? Uh, well, the first four or five months, six months that I was out on the road, I just had the motor home. This is a, a 23 foot class C. Uh, I just had the motor home and I felt very trapped. Um, I wanted to go on backpacking trips. I wanted to go to the grocery store, but I never wanted to move the motor home uh, just because it gets lousy gas mileage. Uh, I'd have to stow everything inside. Um, it was just very inconvenient. Uh, and so I kind of came to a point where I started feeling trapped and stranded a lot, even though I had a driving vehicle of the motorhome. Uh, but for convenience sake, I decided that a car would make a better sense, especially when I worked up in the campgrounds for the summer, where I'm very, very remote. Uh, I couldn't just drive it out to uh, get groceries and so forth because it was too remote. And so uh, one of the questions people have right away is, well, but you now you have an extra motor and the maintenance on a motor and Correct. the gas, it's burning. And then you've got another insurance policy that you pay constantly. True. So has it been worth it to you for the extra expense? Uh, it has been, um, although if I had to start over from the very beginning, I may choose to have like a small truck and trailer or even a truck camper. Uh, I, I might consider things differently had I not already owned the motorhome. And so it is inconvenient to have the, uh, the extra uh, insurance, the extra engine to maintain, um, uh, extra vehicle registration. There are inconveniences to that, but the positive is um, I get incredible gas mileage with this. And what, which kind of car is it? Uh, it's a Ford Festiva, 1993. Um, and so I get close to 40 miles per gallon uh, in the car. But in the long run, I get lousy gas mileage in the motorhome. I get you know less than seven miles per gallon. But I only drive it maybe 3,000 miles in a year. Uh, whereas a car, I might put on 10, 12, 15,000, depending on which kind of trips I do. Um, and so you really have to figure out which is the best balance for you. It, so again, the car for me just was the right decision. Okay, um, is it is it hard to tow? Some some people worry that you know it's it just seems so odd to tow a car versus a trailer. Is it pretty hard to tow? Uh, it's not hard to tow, but you do have to really think ahead for a lot of situations. Um, so with a trailer, you can always reverse. If you get in a situation, you can always reverse. Uh, when you're towing a vehicle and all four of the wheels are on the ground, you can't uh, reverse at all. Even reversing six inches and you will lock the front wheels to the side and it'll start skipping. Uh, very bad for your car. And uh, which I've done that, you know, like, you know, you learn by experience. I'd heard it, but I was like, oh, I can probably do let's it. Find six out. Inches. Yeah, let's find out. <laughs> and very quickly found out that you cannot do that. So be, in a way, because it's such a pain in the butt to, to dry, drag the thing all around the country, mm -hmm. that actually slows you down and keeps you in one place more, more, and then you drive the car more. Correct, yeah. So, and, and part of it is that, um, I mean, I could drive, you know, all over the place if I wanted to, uh, but... Uh, it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> it's, it is. It, well, mostly it's the gas prices, right? You right. Know, it, it's, it's, um, so it's not the inconvenience of towing, it's just, uh, you know, it costs a lot of money in gas if I just drive the motor home. So I'd rather usually stay in a location and then use the car to go get groceries, go explore the area. Um, to me, it's just a lot more convenient and a little more fun because I don't have to worry about dragging my house with me and right. things falling off shelves and stuff. So the tow vehicle is an automatic. Uh, you have a couple options. You can tow it on a dolly. Uh, you could also get a, um, it's a transmission pump, essentially, that circulates the transmission fluid throughout it while it's towing. Um, because otherwise you won't be able to, even in neutral, you can't tow an automatic car four on the floor uh, behind your vehicle. But everyone should double check on your vehicle. Never buy a vehicle planning to tow it until you've looked and know for a fact it can be checked usually with the dealer and the manufacturer. The bottom line is for you, it was a great decision. You have no regrets. Correct, yeah. yeah. I, I love it. It's been a very, it's been a car. It's been a great car for me. Some of my people might worry that uh, 
it would restrict them and they would see less of the country because they don't move very often. Mm -hmm. But your experience has been you see more of the country because you can get there 40 miles to the gallon. Correct, yeah. So I'll, I'll go to a place and then I'll park the motorhome and then I can spend the next two to four weeks exploring an area, you know, driving, you know, within, let's say, 40, 50 miles of where I'm camped, uh, which gives you a pretty good, good range, good travel range. Okay, well, so now the big question a lot of people have, and a lot of what are you going to watch this for, is how hard is it to hook up? I mean, is it a big complicated process? Can the average person do it? And you're just going to walk us through it. Yeah, it, it's, it's not a complicated process. It's, uh, there are steps, and uh, there are easier ways and harder ways of doing it. Uh, and I've kind of learned over the last, you know, I've owned the car now for five and a half years, something like that, going on six. And so I've learned, you know, it took me the first couple of years just to figure out some little tricks. But uh, but in the long run, it's it's pretty simple. It might it'll take, you know, I don't know, five minutes or so to, to hook up um, uh, and, and take less to take down. But it's uh, you, you start learning what what works. And the the biggest thing is having a flat surface to unhook on is the best scenario. All right, so I'm going to actually show you how to unhook uh, the vehicle first um, and then we'll go through and hook it back up but the first thing that I want to do is I want to put the car in park uh, to make sure that if I am on any kind of slope I want to make sure that it's not going to roll away on me when I unhook it uh, one thing to keep in mind is when you're towing a vehicle you have to make sure the steering wheel stays unlocked uh, because uh, the basically the front wheels follow your path so you have to make sure you actually have most cars you'll have to have a key in the ignition and it either on accessories or just in the ignition but you just want to make sure that the steering wheel doesn't lock on you and so my, when i'm towing the key is in the ignition in the well does that car. run the risk of draining your battery uh mine just happens i don't have to have it on accessories um mine will not lock as long as there's a key in there you'd have to check with your own okay, uh but if your accessories are on even if it's on for a couple hours you probably wouldn't drain your battery if you don't have the radio and stuff on, right. um, but something to consider. Something to be aware. Yeah. So now what we want to do, the first thing we'll do is unhook the lights, which is just this uh, right here. This Just a standard four-way yep. light for mini. Yep, there we go. And all it is is uh, I bought you know these, these set of tow lights that just magnetize and sit on the back of the car. Um, you can also have Probably one. 20 bucks or less? 20 bucks, yeah, Harbor yeah. Freight. Uh, you could have it um, integrated into your actual uh, tail lights and so forth, but it's a lot bigger process. It's kind of a pain, uh, and it wasn't worth it for me. I paid yeah. 20 bucks and no problem. Yeah, that's... Uh, you want to take off your safety chains. Um, I crisscross them uh, because someone told me once that that's what you're supposed to do. It's pretty standard, yeah. Yep, so, um, so just unhook those, and then I have a little clip right here. Pop that off. And then mine is not a normal hitch where it has a little lever that comes down. Uh, this is more, I think typically they use it for horse trailers and so forth, but it's this uh, cylinder that you pull back towards you That's and it unusual. springs out. And so then uh, that releases it so I can lift it off. Now, sometimes I can lift it off, right? Like that. Oh, you just broke right off with a hand. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Because no weight is on the tongue. Per correct. All the top weight is still on the four wheels of the car. Correct. And it since we're on a flat surface, there's no tension on it. Now, if if we were on a slope, then there would be a lot of tension in this right. and it would be stuck on. If you are in a situation where it's not uh, level or maybe it's off kilter, something just it doesn't come up very easily, I typically have gone with this and I'll just put it underneath there and then I will just lift it up. So now you have these little pins right here. You just depress one of them right there and then you can slide it over the way. Okay. And so that um, is unhooking it. So now what you want to do is, what most people would do is you'd pull the motor home forward. Uh, because I have a bike rack right here, I can't just lift this up because it, uh, the bikes will get in the way. So uh, for me personally, I can pull up the motor home, make it go up, you know, three feet and then I can put the, um, the tow bar away. Right now, for these purposes, I'm just gonna back the car up, just push it back for a couple feet. So, put it back a couple feet. And again, this is the advantage of being on a flat surface. It sure is. Where you go is your car. I still set the parking brake and so forth. Just out of habit. And so, this particular tow bar um, is called a Stowmaster. Uh, 
it's it's by I think the name brand is Towmaster or Roadmaster. Um, and the Stowmaster, there are some tow bars that sit up like this, mm -hmm. and they're always going to be in your driver's view. Right. Um, this particular one, you hit these little uh, buttons right there, and it collapses down. This slides. Oh yeah, I've seen you do this. Yeah, it slides over, and then it folds down, nice and neat against the front of your car. These things are a little expensive. New, I think they run maybe $600 or so. I put, I happened to get this one on eBay for maybe 150. So I got quite a deal on it. Um, and the tow bar itself comes with just the tow bar and then these base plates, what they call them. This is what actually hooks onto your car. And so those would be uh, model specific. So you'd buy those, attach them to the front of your car and then the tow bar itself slips over uh, the little nipple right here and secures it. And that's essentially, um, so the, the Stowmaster will fit any car, the base plates will change from car to car. So it was like uh, 200 bucks for you to get ready to tow. Yeah, maybe 250, 250. By, by the time everything was said and done. The lights and... Yeah, so, um, so it wasn't too bad. If you have to buy one of these new, the, the tow bar is quite a bit more expensive. Um, but you can usually find them and they're still worth it. I mean, it's such a great deal. Yeah. To begin with, you know, we would just again, fold this out. Spread it into a A. Goes right along that bar. And so now, again, what you would do, because this gives you a little bit of flexibility, um, when you extend these, you can, you can gain probably eight inches or so. Um, but what I do is I put it all the way in and for most people, maybe they want to just then back up the motor home. Right. Uh, maybe, you know, the three feet. For today, just for ease, I'm just gonna pull it ahead because it's light and I can do it. I'll so, stand here and watch. Yeah, that's perfect. I'll, I'll supervise. <laughs> Somebody's so, got it. I put it right there. And then, oh, oh. oh. There we go. There you go. Drop right yep. on. So then you pull this collar back, squeeze this in, and that spring loads back into place. Put down the pin. Clip the safety chain right there. And now, again, because these aren't extended, you want to be able to extend them. Uh, what you want to be careful of doing is you don't want to drive fast to extend them. You want to do it very slowly because you'd hate to shear anything off in here. Uh, and so they want, these pins will pop up when they're fully extended. So we're looking for them to be popped up automatically. Uh, so again, I can either push back the car until they engage, or you can pull the motor home forward, just again, very slowly. And you might have to do a couple little turns here and there just to fully extend them. Um, but once it does, then you're fine. So I might drive forward, you know, five or six feet, take a couple little turns, just idling speed, and then get out, double check that they're both engaged upward. For me, I'm just gonna push it back. Oh, there, obviously they were locked in. Yep, and so now they're locked in. They won't, they won't move, so that's good. So we have the hitch on, we have this fully extended. So now we'll go ahead and put the safety chains on as well. Which is what you would do with every trailer, just completely yep. really standard. And then we'll hook up the lights. Again, everything in reverse. All right. You made it look so easy. It is, it, it actually is a very easy process. Um, the first couple times would be a little more problematic. You might uh, start wrestling with it, but for me, the big aha moment was the crowbar. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this bad boy, because I was always just wrestling, trying to get that thing on and off. Well, Brian, thank you so much for, for walking us through that. My pleasure. Uh, both directions, you went on and then back off. Now you gotta do off again. I know, exactly. So I'm here to camp. Oh, well. yep. It's gonna be fun now. Yep. <laughs> All right, thanks, Brian. All right, thanks, Bob. And folks, we'll visit with you later. Be sure to like uh, the channel on, on YouTube and subscribe. Visit with you later. Bye.